the thing that stands out to me the most about Nick, his smile, he had one of the most beautiful smiles, you know, his whole face lit up. He liked to uh, clown around a bit. He liked to make people laugh. When he was a freshman, he played uh, freshman soccer. And then shortly thereafter, he was uh, promoted to the varsity team. He was, he was terrific. He was a, he was a great teammate for, for the players, and uh, he was a coach's, uh, coach's player. He was the one who was the defender, and he took that job very seriously. His intensity was just unbelievable. His focus in the game, I mean, you couldn't really talk to him during the game. We found out that he had gone out on his own and enlisted in the Army. He had made this decision all by himself, and that he had really decided on the direction he should take. When he came home on leave, he saw these children. He had hundreds of pictures on his laptop, and everything was all about the children. There was this connection with the ball, and he could see they were playing with cloth balls, with tin cans. So when he came home on leave, he said, you know, I'd love to take just a few soccer balls to see how they would play. And that was his way of connecting with them, too. He, he'd been home for two weeks, and um, he'd been getting phone calls from his buddies in Iraq and they were having a lot of trouble. There was a, the insurgents were putting a big push and we knew uh, he was not going back to a good situation. We took him to the airport and he walked right to the gate just before getting in and he turned around. There was so much that I wanted to say to him and so much that he, I felt he wanted to say and he nervously had his beret in his hand and he kept turning it and kept turning it. And I looked at him and I thought, oh my God, you know, is, is this really the last time? He was killed exactly a month after he left home. The Kick for Nick program started off with um, a newspaper article. We said in the newspaper article that, you know, his desire was to share this love of his um, soccer. We started sending balls through our troops to Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and then the program sort of spread. There's about 10 or 12 countries we've sent to now. But we've had soldiers contact us from the Philippines, from Tanzania, from Djibouti. In Rajasthan, we stopped at the school, which um, they barely have shoes to wear. They have dirt floors. Um, we distributed the soccer balls there, and the minute we put it in their hands, the smile just came on, you know, the laughter, and they started playing right away. That was Nick, just transformed right there to these children. They, it, that was what he wanted to see. That is what I know he wanted to see when he asked for the soccer balls in Iraq. Pretty amazing. We have, there's only two states now. There was three states that had not sent soccer balls. Just recently, a coach from West Virginia contacted me and he said, I saw your website and I saw that West Virginia had never sent a soccer ball. He says, I'm going to put West Virginia on the map. Since 2006, we are here over 41,000 soccer balls globally and there are children all over the world who have, you know, nothing, but they have that spirit, his spirit. And every one of those kids, and I've, I've seen that, I've experienced it, I've had the good fortune to put that ball in somebody's hand and, and see the, the transformation. It's magical. And, you know, I see Nick in every one of those soccer balls. <laughs> <laughs>